in dental intelligence. Uh, I've been a friend of, of Dental Intel for many years, actually since its foundation. Uh, Weston Lunsford is a dear friend along with Jerem and your whole leadership team. And I'm going to put it this way. I wouldn't want to practice without Dental Intel or without local med. Without Dental Intel, it's like driving your car with blindfolds on. <laughs> Literally, <laughs> if you are on uh, this conference and you are not a Dental Intel um, client, I would strongly encourage you to do the demo and you'll understand why I make the comment that I would not want to practice without Dental Intel. It's literally like, like, like driving your car with a blindfold on. And when it comes to local med, um, you know, there is a tremendous advantage uh, with local med. You know, last uh, November, October, November, Jerem, when so many practices were struggling filling hygiene uh, because it fell six months after the shutdown. And, you know, we didn't have people in, in April and early May to make their next appointments. And many offices experienced a hygiene drought. Mm -hmm. However, those that had local med were able to use local med um, to make real-time online appointments. Um, I have a client that uh, actually filled 50 hygiene appointments one day using local med and not a single, uh, those 50 uh, appointments were all made online uh, in real time. And they literally filled what would have been, you know, a spotty October uh, turned out to be a full hygiene schedule thanks to the power of local med. Well, I just wanted to recognize that. Let me dive into the presentation. Um, oh, and, and I'll set the stage for this if I may. Many dentists, um, you know, that the, there is uh, um, a silver lining in, uh, in coronavirus. Of course, uh, you know, my heart goes out to all those that were so deeply affected. Uh, and, and, you know, we're still in it to some degree, um, but it affected so many people. And, and my heart uh, goes out to all those affected. However, one of the uh, things that happened in dentistry is that it gave dentists uh, a chance to think about their future. You know, this merry-go-round of life that we're on spins pretty fast sometimes. And sometimes we just keep trudging along without really thinking about uh, the intention and what we're doing. And, uh, you know, the shutdown uh, gave dentists the time to, to reflect a little bit. And as a result of that, many dentists said they don't want to uh, practice in the future the way they've practiced in the past, especially when it comes to PPO involvement. And there is now a groundswell, a growing groundswell of support of dentists um, making the decision to intentionally uh, successfully resign from PPO plans. If you're part of that, welcome. I'm, I'm, I, I'm cheering you on. And if you're curious about it, uh, this presentation will help you uh, make some decisions. So here's a six step plan to successfully resign from PPO plans. Hey, I want to start out by recognizing that dentistry rocks. That's been my story for 41 years. I started in 1980 and I believe it with every ounce of my DNA today. And the reason I believe dentistry rocks is we have the ability to change people's lives every day. I could talk about that till I'm blue in the face, or I could show you a short video. I'm going to show you a short video. This is my dear friend, Dr. David Hornbrook. And what you're going to see is a patient in the chair that David has just provided a full mouth reconstruction to. Full mouth reconstruction. It's a relatively young man. However, he had some dental hardship and David wanted to help and he provided him a full mouth reconstruction. You're going to see the patient seeing his new smile for the first time. There's some audio that goes along with this. The audio isn't important. I'll explain it in a minute, but I want you to just watch it, watch it visually. And this is why I believe, my friends, that dentistry rocks. Um, you to be up because we use the laser. <laughs> Those are tears of joy. There was some laughter at the end of the video, and the laughter was he went to thank the dental assistant uh, who, who he thought was next to him, and she wasn't there. <laughs> that was the laughter. Anyway, that's why I believe Dentistry Rocks. We have the ability to change people's lives every day. You know, there aren't really uh, very many um, professions or very many jobs where we truly 
have that opportunity every day and dentistry is one of those. A little bit of background uh, quickly. Uh, I'm not a dentist. I never have been. My background is the business side of dentistry. I started in 1980. This is my 41st year in this amazing profession. My day job is that I serve as a practice coach. Um, I own a consulting firm called the Thriving Practice Academy and we work with dentists all over the country. Uh, to help you develop your ideal practice. I speak at major dental meetings back when they used to have dental meetings. Uh, of course, they're coming back now. Uh, but I speak at major dental meetings and have spoken at just about every dental conference uh, in the U.S. and Canada and actually had the chance to keynote most of those as well. At last count, I had provided over 18,000 hours of CE. I believe there's only one person in dentistry has has provided more hours of CE, and that would have been your lead-off speaker, Dr. Gordon Christensen. Um, I started the very first dental podcast um, in uh, 10 years ago in, in 2011. It's called The Thriving Dentist Show. And I'm rather proud of the fact that it was the very first dental podcast. And I'm rather proud of the fact that today, uh, 10 years later, we're the number one dental podcast on iTunes, Google Play, uh, Spotify, Apple Music. We have listeners in 185 countries. We publish every Wednesday. This past Wednesday was our uh, 480th episode. We haven't missed an episode in 480 weeks. Um, I'm on the faculty of the Pankey Institute. Some of you may be familiar with the Pankey Institute in Key Biscayne, Florida. I teach the business courses and the behavioral courses, the behavioral side of dentistry. Uh, I teach those at the Pankey Institute in Key Biscayne, Florida. I spend about seven weeks a year uh, doing that. Uh, and I am a practice owner. Uh, even though I'm not a dentist, uh, I do uh, co-own uh, a practice with two wonderful young dentists. Um, I'm a partner in uh, Life Smiles Dental Care. And much of what I'm presenting today comes from our own experience in my own practice. I wanted to own a practice when I learned that I didn't have to be a dentist to own a practice in Arizona. That's, that's uh, one of five states where you can do that. I wanted to own a practice because I wanted to have a test kitchen where we could test concepts and then I could share them with audiences and clients. Um, anyway, uh, this is um, part of my team. This is Dr. Paul, Dr. Tim, and part of our Life Smiles uh, dental care team. Uh, we take our team every year to an annual conference. This was taken in 2018. Some of you might recognize the skyline. That's Seattle skyline in the background. Um, and we're a general practice that also does some high-value services. Uh, I have an amazing team. We're a hygiene-driven practice. Uh, four hygienists uh, each work four days a week, so we have uh, 16 days of hygiene a week. Paul and I bought a dilapidated backwards practice in May of 07. It was uh, very much a fixer-upper, and we've been developing it into our ideal practice ever, ever since. Uh, and we're still developing it. It uh, still is a work in progress. <clears throat> We, um, we're open Monday through Friday, uh, Monday through Thursday, we're open 7 a.m. to 4 p.m. And then on Friday, 7 to 2. So we start early and finish early. We like those 7 o'clock and 8 o'clock appointments for those patients that need hours outside of the normal business hours. Uh, we also, by choice, both of our doctors work three days a week by choice. Paul works Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Tim works Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. We do that for two reasons. Number one, so they can have more family time. Ironically, all three of us have four kids. Now, mine are adults. Uh, theirs are much younger. Uh, but I want them to have more family time. Uh, and secondly, we do that so they can take a massive amount of continuing education and not take that CE at the expense of their family. Anyway, a little bit about Life Smiles. We'll talk more as we go. So let's talk about it now. Here's the reality. The current dental insurance system is broken. There's no way to describe it other than that. It is flat out broken. When you look at the insurance professional, I hope you find some humor in that screen. Uh, when we look at the dental insurance system today, there's four components. There's the dental insurance company that provides the insurance. There's the dentist that provides the care. There's the patient that receives the care. And there's the employer that buys the policy. Of those four entities, there's only one winner today, and that's the dental insurance company. Everybody else loses. The dentist loses because he or she has to take a massive discount in their fees. Right now, that average PPO discount is 42 to 44 percent off of your UCR fees. The patient loses because of all the games the insurance company play, plays. Heaven forbid your patient would come in five months and 29 days after their last hygiene appointment because that claim will be stamp denied because they didn't have the six uh, month wait. And the employer loses because literally they are being gouged uh, by the insurance companies for their premiums. They're being gouged. I'll, I'll show you why in just a minute. The entire system is a win-lose system. 
The insurance company wins, everybody else loses. And this is how I feel when I see in-network insurance fee schedules. I don't know if, about you, but I, I feel like I need to rub my left eye when I look at that uh, shot. Hey, I want to give my friend Brian, Dr. Brian Baliwas. Uh, Brian is a young dentist in San Francisco who... Uh, uh, who made that image, and I want to give him credit for that. By the way, he's a young dentist who started a fee-for-service practice from scratch in downtown San Francisco in 2015, and he's absolutely thriving. And what do you think all of his colleagues told him when he said, I'm going to start a fee-for-service practice from scratch? They said, you can't do this. And he said, watch me. Hey, I want to encourage you to ask questions as we go. Put the questions in chat. And periodically, I'll check in with Jerem, and we'll go through some questions. So the, the only bad question, the only dumb question is the one you don't ask. So please feel welcome to ask questions as we go today. All right, here's why the insurance companies are getting gouged for premiums. Take a look at that screen. Just look at that. That's annual compensation for insurance company CEOs. Well, we pretty much know why this guy's smiling. He's got 27.2 million reasons to smile. $27.2 million a year. Think about it. This guy, he's, ang he's angry because he's not number one. He he's, he's only number two. He he's angry. He's angry. Um, this guy's trying to hide out over here. He put his sunglasses on. He's trying to like slide off the screen. He's like, I hope nobody sees me on this. You know, uh, this guy's saying, you can't, you stay there, buddy. Stay there. You, you can't go away. Um, th this guy's just dumb and how, I mean, he's only making 8.3 million. I mean, what a slacker. Um, and, and this guy, I don't know the story of this guy. I mean, I'm thinking maybe his dad is the chairman of the board because he just looks like a dope. Um, anyway, that's what's wrong with the insurance industry. Dental insurance was started by dentists for dentists in 1968. What happened? What happened is greed. And this screen demonstrates it. Now, I'm a capitalist. I believe in capitalism. However, I don't believe in capitalism at the expense of others. The best form of capitalism is when we help others. And this isn't helping, my friends. Here's a new perspective on dental insurance. From this moment forward, I want you to think of your insurance adjustments, the amount that you write off because of your PPO plan. I want you to think of it as a marketing expense. Why? Because you're paying the insurance company to provide you patients. It's that simple. Is that an effective marketing activity? You know, the only honest answer to that is it depends. Here's how I want to put it in perspective. I want you to, from this moment forward, look at the cost of adjustments versus the cost of a marketing plan. Compare your cost of insurance adjustments with the cost of a comprehensive marketing plan. You may find that it's considerably less expensive to invest in a comprehensive marketing plan and get the added benefits of patients choosing you for reasons other than you're on my insurance. So here's my office, LifeSmiles Dental Care. When we were in network with plans, our average adjustment was 38%. In other words, if the fee was $1,000 for a particular service, we didn't get $1,000 if it was a PPO patient. We got $620. That's the opposite. That's 62%, the opposite of 38. We got $620. And so we were spending, if you accept my definition of thinking of your adjustments, your write-offs, uh, as a marketing expense, we were spending 38% on marketing. Last year, uh, in my practice, we spent 1.6%, 1.6%. Hey, Jerem, can I, uh, can, can I engage you in a discussion here for just a minute? Absolutely. So Jerem, you're a pretty bright guy. We've known each other for a lot, by the way, you have a great stylist, hairstylist. I, I, I want to recognize that. Um, I, I believe we have the same stylist. Um, is yours name Gillette? That's right. Gillette. Uh, yeah. We've got the same one. <laughs> Amazing. So Jerem, if you owned a business, um, I consider you very bright, but we're going to find out right here in front of everyone. I'm putting you on the spot. If yeah. you owned a business, would you rather spend 38% on marketing or 1.6? Take as long as you like. Go ahead. Take as long as you like. Oh, gosh. Let's see. Hmm. <laughs> 1.6. I knew you'd get it. And, and uh, there's a saying that you taught me, and that's that data never lies. Mm -hmm. I mean, isn't that uh, something that applies to dental intelligence? Absolutely. Yeah, sure does. Here's some data right here, right here. Would you rather spend 38% or 1.6%? It's that simple.
Um, hey, Jerem, just to check in, any questions uh, at this point? Um, nope, we're good. Yep. Okay, we'll keep going. I'll check in with you again in a minute. Thanks for uh, thanks for engaging. Yep. Um, it literally is, uh, you know, that simple uh, when you look at it that way. In my coaching work, we have clients all over the country. In my coaching work, our goal is to have overhead no higher than 60%, ideally 50. And 50 is very difficult for a general practice today, uh, but no higher than 60. And we can confidently say that every practice can get their overhead no higher than 60%. Uh, by the way, the ADA says the average practice overhead in 2019, which is the most recent year they have information, uh, was 74% overhead. If your overhead is 74% or higher, you're working too hard for too little. You deserve better than that. And here is a simple math equation. You simply cannot have overhead no higher than 60% if you're writing off 42 to 44%. It is mathematically impossible. Mathematically impossible. So think about that. Here's an actual case study. I won't use the doctor's name, but uh, this happened a couple weeks ago. A potential client called me and he said, Gary, I need help getting out of uh, the mo most common reason why clients engage our coaching services is to help them successfully reduce insurance dependence. Uh, and he said, uh, you know, I need your help. I think I'm getting overrun. Uh, and I said, well, give me some information. He said, well, uh, last year we collected just over a million dollars. Uh, so, wow, that's a great practice. Uh, he said, yeah, let's round it. Let's call it a million dollars. I said, okay. I said, how much did you write off to insurance? He said, I, I don't know because I enter my fees in my uh, software. Um, he had open dental. He said, I enter my adjusted fees, my, my, uh, my contracted fees. So I enter my, con so I don't know how much I'm writing off. And by the way, 90% of dentists don't know what they're writing off because they do the, they do exactly what this doctor did. They enter their contracted fees into their software, whether it's open dental, uh, Dentrix, Eagle software, whatever, whatever software you have. The, the software companies encourage you to do that by the way, because it makes it easier to track collections. The other way to enter it in is to enter your UCR fees and then you have an adjustment once you get your EOB and you figure out what your adjusted production is. And that way you can figure out what you're writing off. But he couldn't do that. So I created a um, Excel um, spreadsheet that would um, do all the math behind the scenes to allow him uh, to determine what he was writing off. So I said, doctor, would you like to know? He said, yeah, I, I would. Uh, I think it's pretty high that I'm writing off, but I don't know. So here's the data. 80% of his practice were PPO plan patients. 20% were fee-for-service. By the way, that's very common in what we see. Practices that are on PPO plans get overrun with the PPO plans because that's where the majority of their patients come from. 80% of his patients were PPO. His average write-off was 42%, right on the amount that, that I've estimated at 42 to 44. Um, his practice, when we ran it through the uh, custom spreadsheet, he had to produce $1,537,000 to collect a million dollars. That's not a collections problem. I want to point that out. That is an adjustment problem. He collected 99.8% of his adjusted production. He was collecting everything he could. But the difference is he had to produce 1.537 to collect a million. So his PPO write-offs were 537000 a year. By the way, if you do that by the month, take 537 divided by 12, it's 44750 a month. So I told him, I said, doctor, do you realize you're spending, and I use spending in air quotes, 44750 a month on marketing? He said, oh my gosh, when you put it that way, it's crazy. Now here, here's where it gets more insidious. The overhead on his practice was a function of needing to produce 1.537 in order to collect a million dollars. His overhead is on 1.37. He was literally drowning. And that is so true of so many. Um, so I want you to realize that. I want you to realize what you're writing off. Uh, and there's a better way. I, I spent 1.6% on marketing. So here's the six step plan to successfully resign from people. And when I say successful, one of the ways we measure that is what percent of our in-network patients do we keep when you go out of network? And the goal is to keep 85 to 90% of what we experience today in our client work. We've done this in hundreds of practices, by the way, uh, all over the country, in every practice format, uh, locational format, 
uh, urban practices, suburban practices, big towns, medium-sized towns, small towns, rural. We've been successful. Uh, company towns. What are some examples of company towns? Um, Houston, Texas. Uh, very heavy uh, uh, corporate presence in, in Houston, mo mostly oil and gas. C uh, Cincinnati, Ohio, uh, another very big company town. Uh, Chicago, Illinois, lots of companies headquartered there. Seattle, Washington, think about Seattle. Uh, Seattle has four major employers uh, that employ a majority of the workforce in and around Seattle. Uh, Boeing Aircraft, uh, one of those. Um, another one is Amazon. Um, another one is a Starbucks and another one is Microsoft. Um, now there's plenty of other employers, but those four, and they all provide PPO plan insurance for their employees. We've been successful with practices in Seattle, even in those circumstances. So the goal is to keep as many, you're going to lose some patients when you go out of network that, that I'm not going to sugarcoat, you're going to lose some. And the goal is to lose as few as, 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 as possible. And what we experience now with our clients around the country is typically they keep 85 to 90% of their in-network patients when they go out of network. Pretty powerful. Here's the six-step plan that I'll go over in detail uh, over the next few minutes. Number one, know your data. This will all make sense as I go along. Uh, number two, develop a comprehensive marketing plan to replace any we might lose. Number three, create an in-office membership plan to attract people that don't have insurance. Number four, get your team 100% on board with this. If your team is 100% on board, you're unstoppable. Number four, elevate the relationship-driven element of your practice. Pe make it such that people do not want to go anywhere else. Anywhere else is a harsher world. And finally, uh, add services not covered by insurance. Have you ever heard the saying, that people will pay for what they want before they'll pay for what they need? Well, that's what this is about. So some of these are, are um, kind of uh, conceptual and some of them are very tactical. Uh, so we'll go through each one of these in details. Let's start with the first one. Uh, know your data, number one. And again, this, this comes from my friends at, at Dental Intel. Uh, Weston, Jerem, and the entire team have taught me that you have to know your data. If you don't know your data, you're driving your car blindfolded. Know your data. So there's, there's some things you need to know uh, to get started. Uh, so let's talk about that. There are three, uh, there's four. First of all, it'd be useful for you to know what percent of your fees are you writing off. And I shared with you that example of that potential client that uh, was writing off 537,000. Be useful for you to know that. Um, and if you want to do that in a simple way, um, you could simply um, look at your usual, pick, pick some common services in your practice, a uh, crown, look at your usual fee for the crown and look at what your contracted fee is and look at the percentage difference. Maybe pick five or 10 most common services and look at those differences. And that'll give you a ballpark figure on that. So there's three critical data, data points in addition to that adjustment that you need to know. Here they are. You want to know every single PPO, PPO plan you're contracted with. Recently, one of our clients, when we started working with them, I asked the office manager, how many plans are, are, are you on? And she said, Gary, I'm not entirely sure because some of these are umbrella plans where they rope us into other uh, plans. I think it's 12. And the actual answer when I dug into it was 34. Now, she wasn't ignorant. She didn't realize, though, well, she did realize, she just didn't know what the effect is, like met life in her practice. Doctor thought he was signing up for MetLife. There were five other plans underneath MetLife. So he was actually signing up for six. So number one, I want to know the name of every PPO plan you're contracted with. Number two, the number of active patients on each PPO plan. And your software can provide that. Dental uh, or uh, uh, Open Dental, uh, Dentrix, EagleSoft can provide that in the report. And then finally, you need to know what the resignation requirement is. In other words, how much advance notice are you require, required to provide when you resign? That will be buried in your PPO contract. It, it, it's on page 298. Okay, I'm kidding, but it probably is on page 298. Um, but you need to find out. It's generally a short period of time. It's generally 30 days. It could be 60 days. It could be 90 days. And that's important information for you to know when we determine the order in which we're going to start resigning. And by the way, don't bother wading through those contracts, which you probably can't find anyway. Um, have one of your team members, have your office manager call uh, the insurance company and simply ask the question. And, and she can say, we're considering resigning. 
can you please tell me how much notice we're required to give in our contract? And they are required, they're obligated to give you that information. Set up a spreadsheet and it'll look like this. Simple spreadsheet, three columns, name of the plan, number of patients on the plan, and the advance notice required to resign. That's, that's you can, anyone can do this, very, very simple. And again, this is important because it'll determine the order in which we're going to resign. That's step one. Now let's keep going. Step number two, develop a comprehensive marketing plan. Very important. <clears throat> so successful dental marketing today is about two things, helping your ideal patient find you and then giving them a reason to choose you. That's all successful marketing is, helping them find you, give them a reason to choose you. They got to find you first. If they can't find you, they can't choose you. And if they find you, but you haven't given a reason to choose you, they're not likely to choose you. It's, it's, it's very simple. So it's important to be proactive here. You need to replace any patients you may lose when you resign from PPO plans in advance. Think about that for a minute. So if, if we figure we're going to lose 15%, if you had 100, I'm going to use simple math, yeah, I'll make up the numbers here. If you had 100 patients on a plan, say I'm MetLife, and let's say, you know, we're, we're going to use the high end of, of what our target is in terms of loss of patient. We're going to lose 15%. That means we're going to lose 15 of them. So we need to replace those that we're going to lose, but we also need to replace the flow of new patients that has come historically to your practice from being listed as an in-network in dentist. So maybe that MetLife plan provides you five new patients a month. So we've got to replace them ahead of time with marketing because if you do that, it allows you to be in a position of strength instead of weakness, a position of strength. So it's today successful dental marketing is all about Google. But what's the number one, sir? Hey, Jerem, uh, uh, can I bring you back on for just a second? You got while, it. While you're doing that, I'm gonna, I, I, I'm not usually presenting in my office with the morning sunshine coming in. I'm gonna adjust my- Yeah, that's, that's great coming through there. Looks like the heavens are shining upon you. They are uh, smiling on us indeed. Um, Jerem, you, you, you got my first test question right. Um, it, let's see if you're on a roll. Okay. Um, Jerem, what's the number one search engine in the world? Go ahead, take a guess. The number one search oh, engine in the goodness. world. Definitely not me. It's not <laughs> Jerem. Jerem's not. <laughs> Don't ask my kids that. Uh, Google. <laughs> Google. Uh, and, and in live audiences, I ask the next question. What's number two? Uh, the number two search engine. And I usually get all kinds of answers like Bing and uh, name some other search engines, uh, Jerem, that you're familiar with. What 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 oh, what might I would say Yahoo. YouTube, Yahoo. There we go. Facebook. I yeah, would, and, and the answer is no, no, no. Yeah. I always tell live audiences, um, no. Um, <laughs> the, the number two search engine is who cares. Uh, <laughs> Because Google is, it's all about Google. But in all seriousness, Jeremy, if you're ever on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, you know that TV show? Yeah, oh yeah. I want you to get it right. I want you to get the million bucks. And the answer is YouTube. Mm. And by the way, YouTube is owned by, drum roll please. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> Google. <laughs> it's all about Google, my friends. So how do you dominate Google and get patients to find you organically? Here's, here's the steps. I'll go through it. Thanks again, Jerem. Um, you need unique website content. This is where many dentists fall on their face and they don't even know it. Their website is not unique. Google penalizes you if you have duplicate content. If you have duplicate content, they penalize you. You will not get on page one of a Google search if you have duplicate content. And, and maybe the marketing company that designed your website, uh, you know, they say, hey, we'll give you an exclusive in your area, but that same website exists all over the internet. If you do not have unique uh, content, you will be penalized. Number two, Google reviews are very important in the algorithm of getting ranked on page one. Google won't tell us what the ranking algorithm is. That's their secret sauce. But we do know that reviews are very important. The number of reviews, the velocity of the reviews, the character of the reviews are all important. Number three, we've got to manage your internet directory listing, name, address, phone. Um, you're listed all over the website, uh, all over the internet with different directory listings. And then the way your name of your practice, the address of your practice, down to punctuation and your phone, 
alone needs to be the same in every directory in order to be ranked high on uh, Google. It's an ongoing process that you need to monitor. Next, we need to optimize your website for SEO, keywords and phrases. My practice is optimized. Uh, we have over 4,000 keywords and phrases uh, that we are ranking on Google in my practice. Uh, Google Maps, you want to get in Google Maps. It's all about the th getting in the Google 3-pack. Uh, it's all about understanding Google EAT gui guidelines. EAT stands for Expertise, Authority, and Trust. It's an upgrade that uh, Google made that they run your website through a test to see if you meet those guidelines. And you want to master Google Lighthouse score. Every one of your pages is scored. Just Google Lighthouse score. And you'll understand what that's about. Every one of your pages is being scored by Google. That's how you master Google today. Um, here's a, a Google Analytics page from my, my own practice for February. This is the number of times my website was found in a Google search, 103,929. In the month of February, here's the number of unique search terms that brought up my website, 3,739. Here's the number of online listings outside of my website uh, that provided uh, listings on my practice. And here's the number of my website pages, 68 pages of my website, rank on page one for Google. By the way, you can get all this information from Google Analytics. It's free. Um, most practices have no idea how they're doing here. Now, once you, they find you, we got to give them a reason to choose you. Dr. Robert Cialdini, this fellow here on the right is recognized as the expert in the world of marketing. He's the Gordon, Dr. Gordon Christensen of, of, uh, of marketing. Uh, 35 years of experience, he, he identified six fundamental principles of marketing. And these principles serve to influence the patient to choose your office. And here's an example of Dr. Robert Cialdini's influence at play. In our About the Doctor page, this is Dr. Paul. Um, nice professor, uh, Jerem, come back on if you would. Um, imagine your wife, Jerem, looking for a dentist. Yep. Okay. And by the way, uh, I'll tell you a fact that you likely didn't know. 82% of visitors to your website will be a woman. And she has a title in the family. Jerem, what's her title in the family? Boss. Exactly. <laughs> Mom, <laughs> right? <laughs> Which of these photos would likely more influence your wife? Um, to go in and see this dentist? Yes. The one on the right with the family. Absolutely. And yeah. you, you hit it spot on. You hit it. What, what, it, it, this photo is good, but this photo is really what it's about. Um, and just to show you, here's Dr. Tim. So uh, I'll back up. Um, I have three uh, daughters and a son. Uh, Paul did the reverse. He has three sons and a daughter. And then when we go to Dr. Tim, um, three daughters and a, he's on Team Gary. He's got three daughters and a son as well. And again, putting a photo like this, the only thing he could have been done better on this photo, Jerem, is if they would have rented a golden retriever and, and put the golden retriever in the photo with them. Okay, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Don't rent a golden retriever. But <laughs> it's all about influence. It's about influence. So I want to share, you can do all this yourself in marketing. Um, however, I'd like to introduce a resource to you. This is the marketing agency I use in my firm. I've been using them in my practice. I've been using them for uh, the last four and a half years. They're called Equa Digital Marketing. Uh, um, there's their website. Uh, they're um, outside of Toronto, Canada. We get 90 new patients a month uh, on average. 90. Now, you may not need that many, but we get 90 new patients a month. Uh, in my practice, thanks to the brilliant work that they do, all of those things that I had in the checklist they do for us. By the way, I'm, I have permission to share their fees. Uh, I really like their fee structure. They have an all-inclusive monthly fee that covers all, all those things um, that I put in the checklist earlier. Uh, it's $1,200 a month. Now, now, that's certainly not chump change, but for them mastering my search engine optimization, getting us ranked on page one, having over 68 pages ranked on page one, that's the probably the best marketing investment I could ever make. If you annualize that, that's $14,400 a year. And doctors, you could trade the adjustments that you have to that $14,400 a year. That may be all you need to do. 
Uh, they have agreed to folks attending uh, the Madness to Growth Conference to schedule. If you're interested, you can schedule a marketing strategy meeting. Uh, there's the link to do that. Um, what they'll do is uh, they'll meet with you. Uh, they'll, they'll do a Zoom meeting. Um, the person that does that, her name's Lila Stone. She'll spend about uh, six hours in prep for the meeting, studying your website, looking at all your Google Analytics, and sharing that information with you in the marketing strategy meeting. By the way, they normally charge $900 for that strategy meeting. Uh, they're willing to do that for you um, as part of the conference uh, at no cost, at, at no cost. So if you just uh, take a screenshot, take a photo of that, um, uh, that link. Uh, so it's uh, equa.com uh, forward slash MSM standing for marketing strategy meeting. I'd strongly encourage you to do that. It'll be the best uh, time you'll ever spend. You'll learn things about your practice. You'll learn things about marketing and you may be encouraged to uh, kind of get off the PPO uh, rat race. All right, we'll keep going on this. Now, Know your data, develop a comprehensive market plan, create an in-office membership plan. An in-office membership plan, I want you to think of this as like your own in-office Amazon Prime card or your own personal office Costco card. It's a wonderful way to roll out the red carpet to people in your community who don't have dental insurance. To our knowledge, we were one of the very first dental offices in the country to have a membership plan. We created ours in 2007. We, and by the way, you can't call it an in-office insurance plan. You don't want to call it that. You're not allowed to, by the way, because then you have to comply with all the insurance regulations. So you can call it other things. We call ours our TLC, our Tender Loving Care Savings Plan. You can call it your Smile Club. You can call it your VIP Smiles Club. You can call it your VIP Smile Saving Club. <laughs> You get the idea. So what are some details? Come up with an annual fee that covers two hygiene visits, um, any necessary x-rays and doctor exams. One exam will be comprehensive, the other will be periodic. Um, you can come up with yours on your own. We recommend to our clients, if they're interested in our recommendation on that, we say make it around $300, $297, $299. And then you provide a savings on any service in your practice to your membership plan patients like Costco does. Now, we tested various discounts. It's a discount. I don't like the discount, but I'll explain why. We wanted the discount to be enough of a discount to motivate people to sign up, but also wanted the discount to be as low as possible for the office. So we tested different percent. We did this in hundreds of practices. 20%, 18%, 15%, 12%, 10%, 8%. And we found that 10% was a sweet spot. Remember, anything less than 42 to 44%, is better for the office than the PPO plan. So I recommend making your discount 10%. I don't like the 10% discount. Let me just share that right now. Do not like the 10% discount, but I like it a whole lot better than the 42 to 44%. I think you'd agree with me on that. And what this allows us to do, it allows us to roll out the red carpet to people in your community who don't have insurance. When they don't have insurance, they don't ask you two questions. Are you in my network? That's a silly question. You don't have a, they don't have a network. And then secondly, they don't ask you when you present dentistry, is this covered by my insurance? Think how cool that membership plan is. No games. Now, what I'm about to say clinically doesn't make sense. I want to declare that I know that. Um, but what I'm about to say, but I want to demonstrate this. Remember, we, we provide two hygiene appointments, necessary x-rays, whatever they need. In our office, we'll provide uh, bite wings, full mouth series, digital pan. Hey, we'll take a, a, a CBCT. Uh, a cone beam, if, if that's something that will give the doctor the, the, the information they need. And that's all covered by that fee. Now, if the patient wants to come in on Tuesday for their first hygiene appointment and come in on Thursday for their second one, I know that doesn't make sense clinically to the hygienist in our group. But if they wanted to do that, knock themselves out. They can do that. But certainly if they want to come in five months and 29 days later, absolutely they can do that. Now, there's many types of people that don't have insurance today. But here's three groups that I want you to think about. Retirees, after they retire, their insurance goes away. Millennials, the opposite age. Do you have any retirees in your community? How about millennials? These people usually haven't been in the workforce long enough to uh, get benefits. How about gig economy workers? Who are those? Those are independent contractors, freelancers. Those are Uber drivers, Lyft drivers, uh, Etsy shop owners, uh, Airbnb owners, VRBOers. And I think when you think about it, that's a huge group of people. And that group is growing, especially in, in the post, uh, 
in in the post pandemic world, post COVID pand pandemic, more and more companies are cutting uh, insurance. Let me give you a resource here. We created our own membership plan when we started ours in 2007. There were no resources. Um, if I were doing it today, I'd, I'd, I'd recommend you use uh, a, a outside uh, a resource to help you with this. There's a brilliant one right there in Utah. Uh, it's called Boom Cloud. Uh, there's their website, boomcloudapps.com.com. Um, I'd strongly recommend them. We recommend them to our clients and they provide a brilliant service, all things related to membership plan, all the legal compliance, all your documentation, the charge, running the charges for your clients, all of that. And they do it at a very modest, uh, modest fee. Um, anyway, let's keep going. Jerem, let's do a check-in uh, as I'm rolling this slide. Um, any questions for me at this point? We do. Hold on just a second. Let me pull them up. I'm just yeah, pull up, uh, pull up one or two, and we'll keep rolling. Um, the first one was, who was the author of the Six Fundamental Principles of Marketing? That book that you were? Robert Cialdini. Robert? And it's spelled C-I-A-L. Uh, maybe Stacy could put that in chat. Uh, C-I-A-L-D-I-N-A, -A, Robert Cialdini. And his two books are titled, the first one, he's written two New York Times bestsellers. The first book is titled Influence. He's one of those authors that chooses a single word as a book title. The first one is titled Influence. And the second one is titled Pre-Suasion. Pre, and that's a hyphenated word, P-R-E-Suasion. Uh, brilliant books. If, if you want to just literally understand influence at, at, at a deep level, and they're great reads, they're interesting. Uh, those are the two books, Robert Cialdini, C-I-A-L-D-I-N-I, -I -I, Robert Cialdini. Cool. And then the next question is, um, do you have a marketing company that you would recommend? Yeah. In fact, let me go back to it uh, just to have it. It is right here. Um, and he may have asked that before I put up that slide. Um, here's the agency. This is who we use in my firm, or in, in my practice, sorry. Um uh, we've used them for four and a half years. We're a paying client. <laughs> it's Equa E K W A. And again, if you want, if you want to uh, take advantage of their offer for our uh, Madness to Growth conference attendees, they will do a free marketing strategy meeting with you. Lila will spend. Uh, their, she's the director of marketing there. Uh, I know them because we refer all of our or clients uh, to them for the great results in my own practice. And they'll schedule it. Take a photo of that screen. By the way, you're welcome to take a photo of any of my slides. Uh, but that's one that you might want to have uh, absolutely at hand. Um, Jeremy, I'm going to keep going. Um, and I'll check in with you in about five minutes for another check in. Fair enough? Yep. All right. Yeah, thank you for the questions, guys. Uh, so far, we've talked about know your data, develop a comprehensive marketing plan, create an in-office membership plan. Now, you got to get your team 100% on board. You get your team 100% on board on this, and they are unstoppable. Your practice is unstoppable. As you talk to your team about this, understand that many of your team members may not have any experience with this, and it may sound kind of scary. So don't be surprised if there's a little resistance and it's only because you're maybe, maybe not familiar with it. And the goal necessarily isn't to be fee for service. Although if you'd like to go all the way and be fee for service, I will be your biggest cheer cheerleader. Maybe success for you looks like starting with 15 or 16 plans and getting down to one or two. Maybe that's success. So as you talk with your team, Remember my favorite radio station, WIIFM. Actually, that's not a radio station. That's an acronym. It stands for what's in it for me. Talk to your team members about what's in it for them. Doctors, if you feel like a hamster on a wheel in your practice because of the PPO plans, your team members do too. Talk to them about a more sane practice environment. Talk to them about being able to spend more time with the patients. Talk to them about the financial benefits. Hey, a practice that's more financially successful can reward our team members better. Uh, so talk to them about what's in it for them. Provide some verbal skills training. We'll be doing that right here in a minute. Have some dedicated team meetings to provide role playing together so that you can together learn how to overcome objections when patients have questions. Learn how to answer frequently asked questions. And finally, I'm going to share a really fun exercise to do together as a team. Let me go through that in detail. So. After you go out of network, you're going to get calls like this from your patient. Do you accept my insurance? 
We get those calls every day. We get about 10 of those calls every day. And we convert nine of them to new, new pay to a kept appointment. And here's how we do that. Without training, many team members, if you're out of network, so no, we're not in network. Clunk, phone hangs up. So instead, here's how it might be answered. Carly's one of my team members that might answer the phone. Um, we love seeing new patients here at Life Smiles. You called the right office. By the way, my name is Carly. Who am I speaking with? Says Linda. Linda, although we're not contracted with Delta Insurance Company, you can absolutely use your insurance benefits here in our office. Not only will you use them, but we'll file your claims for you. We'll submit all the documentation. We'll follow up with the insurance companies. Uh, in fact, when you come in, you're going to meet Meg. She's our insurance coordinator. She's an expert at helping our patients get the maximum benefit of their insurance policy and making the process very easy for you. And if this was true, we would say, Linda, we have many patients who have the very same Delta Dental insurance that you have. Linda, would you prefer a morning or afternoon appointment? That's how we answer that, and that's how we convert 90% of those calls. So, by the way, that fun exercise that you do is, um, after you've done some training with the team, doctors, I want you to do this. Have a team meeting and go around the room like in our case, there's, set, there's 16 full-time team members. Paul and Tim and I make 19. Go around the room and ask each team member to give one reason why patients should come to your office for care. One reason. And here's the rules. You can't repeat any answers. So we go to the next person. They have to have a new answer. And doctor, you be last because the last one's the hardest. And go around the room twice. In our office, that would be 19 of us. And going around twice would be 38. Now, your office might be small. Maybe you have eight team members, maybe nine with the doctor. And so it's 18. If you can't answer that question, why they should come there, then you're not prepared to go out of network. But, but the vast majority of time, we have no problem. Uh, the other day, I did this in an office with 25 team members, including the doctors, and it's 50 answers. And at the end, they said, we've got more. Can we go around again? <laughs> So I think you get the idea here. Um, fun exercise. Let's go on to the fifth uh, step. Elevate the relationship-driven element of your practice. Elevate that. I want you to remember this quote. It was said by the poet Maya Angelou. Maya, this is what this is all about. I've learned that people will forget what you said, people will forget what you did, but people will never forget how you made them feel. Think about that. You know, that's worth repeating. I've learned that people will forget what you said. People will forget what you did. But people will never forget how you made them feel. That's the challenge with being a network. We're hamsters on a wheel. We can't spend the time we want with our patients. Um, and by going out of network, you can truly practice the way you want to practice. That's why so many dentists today are resigning from PPO plans because they don't want to practice in the future the way they practiced in the past. So here's some tips that you can do to elevate. Add a place in your software to keep notes about your patients. N spouses' names, kids' names, the dog's name, their hobbies, their interests, what college they went to. Um, you know, very important if you're in Utah, if they went to BYU, don't talk to them about U of U. Uh, 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 Jerem, is, is, that, is that a good bit of information? Is that useful at all? Yeah, yes, that's very good. You don't want that. <laughs> yeah. And, and if you're in Oregon, uh, where I went to school, University of Oregon, don't talk to them about Oregon State. <laughs> <laughs> so very important. So we want to know the important dates of their life, their anniversaries, their, you know, the important dates. Um, have a place in your software, not your clinical notes. It doesn't belong in clinical notes, by the way. Uh, it gets lost in there. But just the important part is to have it somewhere that, that is in the same place. Encourage your team members to add information to the notes because very often the team members have a treasure chest of information about your patients. Maybe they know that Linda is now caring for an elderly mother at home. Very important information to have. Now, doctors, I'm going to, you, you might frown at me on this one and, and I'll, I'll, I'll take it. Um, I want you to come in 15 minutes before your morning huddle. Yep. And review the notes on every patient you're going to see today. Do your homework. Review those notes. And when you walk in to do your hygiene check, you are prepared. 
you are prepared. If it was me, you'd come in and say, Gary, it's so good to see you. How's your wife, Therese? Uh, I see her teaching yoga these days. How are, how's her yoga studio going? And how am I going to feel when that happens? I am going to feel important. I'm going to feel appreciated. I'm going to feel that I'm being treated by people who know, who I know, like, and trust. Old school, but consider sending out handwritten thank you notes uh, every day. I teach our clients to send out uh, four or five handwritten notes. A team can write them, you sign them. Who do we send notes to? Uh, maybe someone's just completed treatment, recognizing the great decision they made. Maybe someone that drives away to come see your practice. Hey, George, we realize you drive a ways to come to our practice, and I just wanted to say thank you. We appreciate your loyalty. Uh, what about just the, the, the bluebird patient that makes you smile when you see your name on the schedule? Linda, when I see my name, your name on my schedule, it just makes me happy. I know I'm going to have a good day. I wish all of our patients were like that. Thanks for being part of our wonderful patient family. Evening we care calls or text messages. One of the things we do in our practice, um, we uh, call or today send text messages to any patient that received an injection that day in the practice. And the message says something like this. Um, hey, Linda, this is Dr. Paul, your dentist. I like to reach out uh, to my patients on the evening of treatment. I was just checking in with you to see how well you're doing. And then we usually add something personal. Maybe they shared something that day. Uh, maybe Linda said she was excited about today because it was her daughter's first soccer game. Hey, Linda, I hope your soccer game went well with your daughter today. No need to return my text. Just want to let you know I was thinking about you. We used to do that by, by phone call, and 98.5% of them went to voicemail. Two, and they were very appreciated. Um, two years ago, we switched to text, and it made it even easier. And we, we hear from our patients that they really appreciate those. Um, so add that. We're coming to the last step here, and we'll tie it all together. So here's the steps. Know your data, develop a comprehensive marketing plan, create an in-office membership plan, get your team 100% on board, elevate the relationship-driven element of your practice, and finally, add services not covered by insurance. And there's no blueprint to follow here. Uh, rather, think about the clinical areas that interest you and use those to create your own unique selection of high-value services to incorporate into your practice. You might consider things like this. Placing, restoring, of course, you're going to need massive amount of CE to do this, but that's part of the fun. Pick the things you want to do. Place and restore implants, adult orthodontics, cosmetic dentistry, oral conscious sedation, maybe complex restorative dentistry, maybe diagnosing and treating sleep apnea, obstructive sleep apnea. Maybe if it's allowed in your state, uh, Botox might be a service. People pay for what they want before they'll pay for what they need. That's what that's about. More resources for you. We're coming to the finish line here. Uh, I, if you don't already listen to it, I invite you to listen to our Thriving Dentist Show podcast. You can find it on the website. You can also find it on iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, Apple Music. It's free. 480 episodes. Every one of them can be downloaded free. We created a second podcast. Uh, I did this about two and a half years ago called the Less Insurance Dependence Podcast. We publish it every Thursday. Uh, we now have about 130 episodes, and each one, it's a short format podcast. Each one is 15 to 18 minutes long, and it's all about how to successfully reduce insurance dependence. Um, it's your blueprint. It's your blueprint to follow. It's free, all 130 episodes. Great for team meetings, great for training, great for you, doctor, to get your mindset around this. They're free. Um, all of them can be downloaded on anywhere you get your podcast. Just type in those titles. T take a picture of that slide and... Uh, do a Netflix-style binge listening if you are so inclined. They're all free. I think free is good sometimes. Um, here's some contact information for me. Uh, there's my email address. Um, here's my personal cell phone. Best way to reach me is text message. Jerem, you know that, right? <laughs> Best way to reach me is text yes, message. Yes, I do. <laughs> yeah. By the way, text me. Uh, it, it's free. The message actually says on my, on my voicemail, um, don't leave a message. The mailbox is full. Just hang up and text me. Um, but anyway, you're welcome to do that. Um, I, I, I provide that, uh, uh, especially to my friends uh, that are here because of Dental Intel. But uh, reach out to me. I'd love the opportunity to hear from you. You're welcome to ask any questions. By the way, if you'd like guidance in successfully resigning from PPO plans, we welcome new clients. 
um, feel welcome to contact me so I can learn more about your practice and determine if my coaching services are a good fit for you. Um, if I can share our fees, I've kind of followed the lead of Equa in the way they've set up their fees. Um, we have a, a monthly service fee. Um, there's, there's no uh, onboarding fee. There's no upfront fee. Um, there's simply a, a monthly service fee. It's $1,500 a month. We want to be of such value to you that uh, you would uh, never want to practice without us. Um, in any case, if you're interested in that, text me and we can schedule a time to chat and see if it's a good fit for you. Um, 